Hello there everybody, Crash Bandit Spark 12 AK Dingo Crash here and today we're heading into Compactor Reactor. Oh, I'm gonna shake, rattle, and roll your bandy coot butt. Yep. <laughs> that was uh, that was quite an uh, that was a quite of an interesting uh, dialogue. <laughs> very very interesting indeed. Now this stage, guys, requires us um, backtracking. Like you can get a regular gem in the stage, and uh, y you will pretty much have to hunt for. Um, you will have later on to come back to the stage, as you can see. Uh, as you can see right here, you need the yellow gem in order to go through that pathway. So that means, you know, the first level that requires backtracking in this game. Um, now, this is also the first stage that has you playing a level like this. I just struggle to describe what this kind of stage this is. But, uh, well, it's a mine stage where, you know, you're going through a gold rush. Um, it's a quite an interest. it's a quite of an interesting concept for a stage, and as you can see, once you head into the end of it, you, you actually get to this point of the stage where, um, you're in, I, I guess that Cortex's laboratory, I, I'm not too sure what this exactly is supposed to be. But as you can hear, there's really noisy machines right here that will try to rape you from every corner. <laughs> and um, as you can see, those enemies from Crash Bandicoot 3 are still here waiting for us, waiting to demolish us. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen, really, because <laughs> we're way stronger than them. Now, another po thing that I wanted to point out uh, one thing that I actually liked about this game is that every stage, um, I'm pretty sure you guys would agree with me on this, um, but like every stage in the game, I mean not every stage, every warp room in Wrath of Cortex, since there's elements, each warp room has its elemental effects, which is, it's very interesting and it's, it's very cool looking. If you're asking me, um, that wasn't like that. Well, it was kind of like that in Crash Bandicoot 3, but not as uh, as beautiful as it is in this game. Like it really explains. Like in the, in the first warp room, you're in this kind of a jungle, uh, you know, atmosphere in a way, and stuff like that. Which um, you know, it's a it's a very cool thing to have one. Yeah, you need to remember the count of, like, collecting all of these boxes because you, you're pretty much going to screw up really bad if you don't remember uh, the amount of times you have to be jumping on on the boxes. It's one thing that, like, you have to mem memorize very well, especially when it comes to the other Crash Bandicoot games, like, it'll, it, well... Technically, in Crash Bandicoot 1, you have to count, like, 10 times, and then, like, in Crash Bandicoot 2, I think you have to count, uh, twice? I'm not too sure, I don't exactly remember how it went, uh, in Crash Bandicoot 2, but y you have to count the amount of, you know, uh, the amount of times you jump on a bouncy box, because, well, it gives you Wampa Fruit, and uh, it can get to, it can be a bit of a hassle. And um, just to memorize, <laughs> just off the bat, you know, uh, you see, I just got scared because I thought that was actually the last jump and I nearly fucking died. And um, I'm surprised that I haven't died once yet. Because at this, this stage, if you die once or so, um, you don't uh, really lose anything. But um, you have to be extremely careful either way. And I think we do want to keep our Aku Aku with us. 
And we're pretty much done with the stage. Just like, I actually expected it to be a little longer than this, but I thought wrong. Now, pretty much, um, we're ne in the next part, we're actually going to face um, the first boss in the game. As you can see, uh, when you finish all of the stages and, and the boss is ready for access, um, you cannot access any of the levels, which was never like this in, in, the, in Crash Bandicoot 3. In Crash Bandicoot 3, you could, you could access the stages over again, but as you can see, the, the those little things that appear uh, like on the stage usually appear on on um, what's his name Crunch's um, logo, or like above Cr Crunch's logo. But also the reason why I'm not doing this in one part, why I'm not doing the boss fight in this. Uh, you know the stage in the boss fight in one go the reason why I'm not doing this is because um, uh, w well as you know like the title of the video is usually very long and I don't uh, I don't make my log uh, my titles of my videos short like crash Bandicoot let's play crash Bandicoot WOC I don't do that I, d I type let's play crash Bandicoot the wrath of cortex Part 106 percent part five this is gonna be part five so if I'm gonna try and put this and that one stage the, like the names in one title it's gonna be annoying to handle so that is uh, this is why they're why I'm not doing this in one part but as you can see um, the thing that I was talking about like as you can see it gives you like the um, the earth element, the feeling of the earth element, which is really amazing. And you know, for to the boss fight, what happened in Crash Bandicoot 3 is that like, once you finish all the stages, like another icon used to appear on the ground, like while you, you know, hold on them all on, on the numbers. But now, uh, it everything points to Crunch to the boss fight which the boss fight appears in the middle of the warp room, which was never like that in Crash Bandicoot 3. So there's pretty interesting facts, and um, we're, we'll go, we're gonna discuss more in the next part. So thanks for watching everybody, and we're, and we're gonna head in, in the next part, we're gonna hand, blah, blah, blah. don't forget to drop a comment and a like, and subscribe if you haven't, and in the next part, we're gonna head into Rumble in the Rocks. So thanks for watching and goodbye and thanks for watching everybody Jesus and don't forget to drop a comment and a like and we shall see you later bye bye.